All right, guys, thanks for hopping on. This is our Dream Team Monday Night Zoom. And I am super excited because I'm not the one talking tonight. I love when someone else does the talking. Before I bring Becca on, I want to remind you guys that there was an announcement today. Basically, Maria and another leader have um, a give back idea that they shared with all of us, including a graphic that at one point had a misspelled typo in it. I don't know if it's fixed yet, Sonia. I don't know if you've seen an update. It's still not fixed. Okay. Um, but it's a great idea. It's about uh, getting, basically collecting money to order a bunch of hand creams and then take them to where you feel, you know, maybe a memory care floor or a nursing home, a facility, something like that, where um, they could be, you know, used. And, and they gave all kinds of ideas. Uh, you know, maybe somebody can only do, donate $15 and somebody else can donate 10, you know, together. That would be plenty for hand cream and then you can even get like a little stocking or a ribbon or something and, and you know make kind of make it like a nice little gift so that video is on the dream team page so you can watch that and then there was something else i thought i needed to remind you guys of but i can't think of it right now so maybe i'll think before the end of the video if not i'll figure it out so anyway with no further ado i'm gonna bring on becca she was at a conference i guess i'll call it i don't know if that's technically the right word but she was at a conference last week and posted on facebook that they were going to be talking a lot about communication, and I was like, oh, girl, take notes and share. So she is coming on to share. So, Becca, you are unmuted, and I'm... Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. So, yes, I was at a conference last week for my job, and because I hold kind of a leadership role at my job, I do a lot of training and mentoring of new staff. Um, I went to a lot of sessions that were geared more towards that stuff. And this one that we're going to talk about today are the seven steps of coaching conversations. So I thought it would be really cool and good for us as a team because that's what we do for each other, like upline to downline, sideline to sideline. Um, so it's all about those conversations and how they can be more productive. And the guy who did the presentation, his name was Dan something, um, but the website is leadershipfreak.com. And I haven't had a chance to go on there yet, um, but that's where he is from. So we're going to talk about the seven steps of coaching conversations. Um, and the reason it's important is because when typically when we give feedback to people, so um, like if somebody comes to you with a problem and we have more words for negative things than we do for positive things. Um, and when we are talking about a discussion, discussing a problem and trying to solve it, which you would think would be a positive thing, like I can't get any customers or I don't have any promoters or so-and-so stopped ordering or whatever, um, our conversation is typically 50% negative um, and 30% positive and then the rest is just neutral so there's a big gap in that so this aims to kind of flip that um so the first step in a coaching conversation is when somebody comes to you and says we have a problem so the first the key to that is to not let the person go on for too long about what their problem is like don't make it your problem it's their problem it's their monkey so don't walk away from it with another monkey on your back basically, because we all have enough of our own, basically. Um, you want to kind of end the conversation quickly, restate the problem to them so that, you know, you all have clarity, but restate it in a way that's defining, defining it in terms of behaviors, their behaviors. So what they're doing and what they're not doing. So that's going to be key moving forward. So step two is imagine. So the person who's coming to you for mentorship or coaching or leadership or whatever, you want to ask them, what would perfect look like? So you want to describe what you're trying to achieve. I don't want to talk too fast. I want people to write if they want to. Step three is trying. So you want to ask them, what have you been trying? And then you want to shut up <laughs> because a lot of times people don't know or they're not able to articulate that. And that's okay. It's actually better if they come to that conclusion on their own and are able to say that out loud to you. 
So just be quiet. Um, the step four is stop. So maybe they have come up with some things that they've been trying. If they're not where they want to be, that means it's probably not working. So it's silly to like just keep trying harder on things that aren't working. That's not the answer. So step four is stop because maybe they need to stop doing some things. Step five is called imperfect. So we already, we already talked about what perfect might look like, but now you want to ask what imperfect behavior on their part will move the ball forward. Because we all know, oh, leadership dot, leadership freak dot blog, thank you. Um, where was I? Oh, what imperfect behavior will move the ball forward? Because we all know there is no perfect. So we don't need a touchdown, we just need a first down, right? Because movement equals energy equals momentum. And that's really what we're going for, just anything that is gonna start that forward momentum. So have them come up with three or four different options. If they say they can't think of anything or whatever, again, this is putting it back in their court. Um, maybe who might know? Who could you go to for ideas? If you were giving me advice, what would you say to me? So those are some things that you can, can say to get the other person to take some ownership of it themselves. And then at that point, you, um, you get them to choose. They've generated the list of three or four options. And then you give them the choice. Okay, which one of these do you want to try? Because when they're making the choice and they have more power over their actions, their solution is going to be best because that's the one they're going to do. So even if it's maybe not the one you would agree with, you know, you can offer some, some feedback or some experience you have, but ultimately the thing that they decide to do is going to be best because they'll actually do it. It's not somebody telling them to do it. Um, so at that point, you want to set a time to meet or talk again about that specific issue. So your step seven is, what would you like me to ask you when we get together next week or when we talk in two days or whatever? So it's not like, you know, what did you have for dinner or, or something like that? It's going to be things like, what did you try? How did it work? What did you learn? Um, what did you learn about yourself? What did you like about it? What was challenging about it? What would you do differently? So those types of questions. But he said, ultimately, these conversations work best when they're short. So like 15 minutes or less. So people don't get too bogged down in the negative aspect of it. Um, and so that you, the more you think about it as the person doing the coaching, oh, sorry, Sonia, um, I'll go back in a second. The more you get bogged down in the coaching conversation, the more likely you are going to feel obligated to put it on your to-do list or on your worry list. And that's not, that's not your role in this conversation. A leader doesn't necessarily mean, it doesn't mean you do for in this role your coach which is i guess from all the research what adult learners prefer anyway that's how we do with our staff at work and that's actually the parents that i work with i work with kids with disabilities and that's the teaching style we use with them too is coaching instead of telling them what to do basically so i thought it was pretty cool so again this the, the first step is we have a problem the second step is imagine. The third step is trying. Fourth step is stop. Fifth step is imperfect. Sixth step is what would you like to try? And then the seventh step is what would you like me to ask when we get back together? Is there any other? I'm interrupting, but I just, I love this. I love what you said about 
whatever solution they come up with is the best one even if it's like not in my mind the best one mm -hmm. because it's so true they're going to do mm -hmm. what they'll actually do that one yep this is so good so have you i mean i know it's only been a week have you did you do you i mean i know you said this is kind of how you do it but is this always how you've done it or have you tried some new things at work this week like have you have you noticed a difference um the thing that i and i've only been back at work one day since, oh. since i've had this conference today was my first day back at work so i only had a few visits but um i use this as one of my parents actually and especially like step six and seven mm -hmm. which is basically what you just talked about so together we i'll get back i'll go back through it sandra um so basically we kind of you know through our session i demonstrate things which leaders in this team demonstrate how to do things um and then at the end of our visit we were kind of future planning and i said okay what three things stuck out to you today from our visit and so the mom you know said three things and i said okay which of these would you like to try between now and when i see you again in two weeks and we wrote it out so it was kind of like giving her homework but it was homework she chose herself mm -hmm. and so in my mind that means she feels it's doable yeah. She feels it's doable for her. She feels it's doable for her family's schedule and routine and all of that. So if I just, I could sit there and tell people what to do all day, but if they're not going to do it, then there's no point. Well, right. And like you said, I, I feel like if I tell people how to do something or what to do, then I do take that on, you know, mm -hmm. like, they do it or they, you know, they said they were going to do it. Are they going to do it? Whereas it's so hard to like it's just it's, this is good this is so much better to like separate my day from somebody else's day you know what i mean like i can be there for mm -hmm. people and coach them like you said but then i don't have to like i don't have to take it on which that's a really that's a good skill for everyone, for everyone right yeah I mean, you can use this with your kids like with anybody really mm -hmm. um so step one sandra was we have a problem that's when somebody comes to you with a problem i think she's I think she's out. Might, of I know. Now. But that's okay. Well, we have it. We have it on replay. <laughs> okay. And then there was one more little thing. If you if we have time, if you want me to go through it. So when somebody's asking for feedback, oh, okay. <laughs> um this guy said basically the feedback sandwich is out. It's old news. It doesn't work anymore. People don't like it. So don't do the feedback sandwich like a positive, then a, like a negative or a criticism, then another positive. He said, no, don't do it. Because <laughs> everybody knows what you're doing, basically. Um, so what he said was give the bad news first, or like the negative feedback, critique, whatever you want to call it, then the good. And he said, within a conversation, your positives, to negative the ratio needs to be about three to one for that person to walk away not feeling like crap basically and then there was this other thing that he showed us that i thought was pretty cool and you can do it for self-reflection or you can do it to help somebody else reflect on like a specific aspect, their effort, whatever. So if just take a, a piece of paper and draw a horizontal line, no numbers, nothing. So just a horizontal line. And then on the left is like terrible, couldn't be any worse. And on the right is couldn't be any better, I'm perfect. But you don't write any of that down. There's, but you have that person like put an X where they think they are and like you don't have to agree with it or whatever it's their self-assessment or it's your own self-assessment and then you start asking questions like why you know why did you uh why didn't you move it as far to the left as you could have or yeah why didn't you rate yourself all the way to the left so that they can give themselves some positive feedback 
because all the way to the left is couldn't get any worse, right? It's terrible. So you ask them, well, why didn't you rate yourself all the way to the left? Like, what are these good things in here that are happening? So that they can learn to see their own positives as well. Um, and then you can say, what might you do to nudge yourself to the right? So it's going back to that step where you talk about what imperfect action can you take to move the ball forward, which is basically what that step is. But by not putting like numbers on it, like zero to 10 or whatever, I think people can more easily see where the movement could happen. So like, it's pretty hard to think of yourself like, ooh, I'm a three out of 10, I'm a 30%, like, ugh, that's not good. Um, but if it's, if it's just a mark on an arbitrary line, then you're not assigning as much judgment to it. And we did it for ourselves there in the class and it was, it was pretty cool. And we worked through things and like, give yourself three, three options of things you could do to move yourself forward and which one would you pick? And, and we did all that, so. It works for yourself too. That's all I got. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna open this up for questions, for comments. I would love to see if anybody has ideas on any of these steps that you could utilize with customers. I know we have a lot more direct role in, in guiding them and suggesting what they should do, what products they should take. But does anybody see any of these steps you could use with customers? I mean, I, yeah, I feel like taking the, the majority of people come to us to lose weight, right? They say they want to feel good. They say they want more energy, blah, blah, blah. But then they're like, it's been two weeks and I'm not down 30 pounds. So that's the problem. Mm. Right. And I feel like a lot of times they, they say they know that thrives on a miracle and blah, 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 blah. But I feel like if you could kind of coach them through this mm -hmm. to where they start taking some responsibility for the, are they taking it properly? Are they supporting their thrive by eating well? Are they moving their, you know what I mean? Like you could kind of coach them mm -hmm. back to like, instead of relying just on the product, they can start taking some of the responsibility that yes, you could pop the capsules, but you can't then pop pizza and beer. Um, so that was like the first thing that kind of came through my mind as far as like customers go. Cause I feel like sometimes we panic as promoters. I get, I, the, I would say the majority of the questions I get from promoters on the team all day long are so-and-so still doesn't feel good. And she's on her fifth day or so-and-so doesn't feel good. And she's in her third week. And they're just so quick to be like, Oh my gosh, she's going to quit ordering. And I'm like, well, what is she taking? Is she taking it right? What else is she doing? Is she, you know, so I just feel like this would be a really good way for somebody instead of panicking when someone's like, I don't feel great yet or you know, cause a lot of times too, it's money. It's not actually how they feel, but this would be a really good way to kind of coach someone through the line of, you know, what can, what imperfect action can you do to fix this? Well, a lot of them will be like, Oh, maybe I should start eating fruit and vegetables. <laughs> so I don't know. That was my first thought, but what, what do you guys think? You can unmute yourselves or wave me down and I'll unmute you. Yeah, I can. Somebody can mute me too. Do you guys see how this would be helpful just even with your team? You know, the team members who nobody wants to order, nobody trusts me, nobody believes me. Because usually when you start coaching them through that problem, it comes down to the fact that they only ask two people all month versus, you know, the amount of people that we're supposed to be asking during the month. And I don't know if you guys saw, I put it in the comment section. I originally tried to Google leadershipfreak.com, but it was leadershipfreak.blog. That's weird. That's, I'm, that's what he gave us. So maybe he, oh. even his well, email, my his phone email, leadershipfreak.com. My phone redirected me there. So, oh, all right. Or maybe it's even .blog.com. I feel like Courtney says, I feel like doing, I feel like the doing what they want to do is definitely something we deal with a lot. Examples when people don't want to do the shakes and just the patch. Yes, exactly. This would be a great technique to coach them through it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, Courtney, yes, I could not agree more. Laura Doofman, you're unmuted. Um, the coffee thing. You know, people who don't want to give up coffee and then they're not feeling that, you know, they're not, um, they're still tired. Um, 
kind of coaching them through that, like, or not even just coffee, soda, you know, the people who are addicted to caffeine and don't want to give it up. I right. Mean, you know, yeah. we all deal with that constantly. Well, I think it just mm -hmm. goes to back, you know, what she said, like, this is their problem. This is their issue. And they want us to take it on. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I want my coffee or I don't feel good. Or you said I would feel good. And then that, so if you can just in your mind, just keep this in your mind of like putting it back on them Well, this, you're having this problem because, and like make them talk it through. I feel like, cause I do this, some not, not this exact thing. I am going to start using this exact thing at work though, too, at my day job, mm -hmm. because I do try to put the stuff back on, but I'm not very good at letting them come up with what they're supposed to do. I just tell them what they're supposed to do. <laughs> it's easy. But, I mean, yeah. yeah. It's easy for me to tell you what to do. It's just easier. But I like that because then if someone says to me, oh, I'm going to start eating this and then they don't, I'm like, well, you're the one that said you were going to do it, not me. Um, but it's the same thing. I think, and this is just a generalization, but a lot of people want to have a problem that's someone else's issue, right? They want, this is my problem. I want you to fix it. I want this to, you know, this needs to be your problem with me now. Like you're the thriver that got me into this and I don't feel fabulous after three weeks. But some of us listen to Tammy better than others. Yeah. <laughs> some. Um, but I like this because, again, mainly when it boils down to like those three-way conversations, when someone's not feeling great, when you really start asking them questions to get them to talk, it's because like Laura said, they're still drinking their coffee or they're not drinking water or they're not eating food during the day. Like they pop mm. right and they think that that's all the calories they need all day long. So I like this. I'm so glad you took that class. Me too. Yes. Yeah. And I'm excited to get on this guy's website and kind of play around a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, haven't, I haven't had a chance to look at anything I saw from the whole uh, conference. But. You've been busy. Uh, any other comments? Anybody have questions? All right. Nope. Nope. Everyone's good. All right. Becca, thank you for doing that. I'm so, You're I'm so happy that you shared that with us. And I, I do think that we'll all probably get on that website and find some some good information. Um, I like the self-assessment thing too. Like just when you were talking about it and I was drawing it out and then you were like, okay, now you do it. And I was like, oh, I got that pit in my belly where I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it on myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> but I like how you said, what steps could you take to move the ball to the right? Because moving the ball to the right is not as scary as being perfect. Exactly. Mind. You know, like when you, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, I can get behind moving the ball to the right a little bit. Might not get it all the way over there, but I can get behind moving it some. So I do like that. Right. You're a football girl, right? You just need a first yeah. down. Yes. Yeah. Got to get that first down, people. Move yep. the ball. Um, <laughs> no, I like it. Thank you. You're welcome. People share. Um, and I'm going to plug you one more time. She has her vision board. I'm going to call it a party. On sure. the 4th, 4th of September. So if you guys are interested in that, you need to RSVP on the event because you have homework to do before the event. Yes, nobody's doing their homework. People. It's actually on my list to message everybody. Let me go and back here. We have a problem. A, no one's doing their homework. I need a firm RSVP by December 1st. Firm. There's some maybes on there. All right. Um, Sandra, you are on the yes going. Hang on, let me unmute you. Yeah, you know. Have, there's another girl that I invited who's a yes. Oh, yes. Perfect. Her name's Teresa. Oh, good. I see a Teresa on my list. Perfect. Okay. okay. All right. Sonia, yeah. I need you. Sonia. I'm going. Okay. Yep. You're on the list. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Just yeah, I'm a little behind on my homework, though. Okay. <laughs> it's fun. I didn't even realize we had homework. <laughs> it's all in the event page. Okay. Um, uh, oh, I know what I wanted to remind you guys. If you did not get a chance to listen to the Monday morning motivational call yet today, the recording is in there. It is good. I actually took basically word for word the thing they said to send. I sent it to five people. These are five people who have literally never responded to anything Thrive related, but then I'll send them something about, you know, something random, their cat, their dog, vacation, and they'll always respond back, but they literally are radio silence for Thrive. A lady responded. She wants information. I almost didn't know what to do with myself. I was so excited. So I'm glad we have the recording because sometimes I feel like I need to listen to those things more than once to, you know, get it up here. But um, it's the five people that I wrote down yesterday when we did the planning with Sandra. So thank you, Sandra. Like, it was so funny. I was driving today and I was like, oh my gosh, it's all coming together. The planning Zoom, 
went into the Monday morning motivational. And my God, I might get a customer out of the deal. It was so exciting. <laughs> so if you haven't listened to it, I highly encourage you to. Um, and I know a lot of it came out of um, some of like Kayla Fox's uh, plan of action. And I mm. love them. But at the same time, sometimes we have like 40 minutes or more. And so yeah. the Monday morning motivational was like 15 minutes and I got what I needed and went about my day. So don't always feel like you have to spend time, you know, like I, if I have time, I listen to things. If I don't, you know, Sonia says I used that a cup in a couple last week and two responded. One said she couldn't order and the other was interested in promoting. She said, see, oh, and then radio silence. Well, that happens mm -hmm. sometimes too. But I forget what the follow-up was. Susan and Lindsay asked me to speak this morning, but I was already going to work. Oh, Courtney Summer, maybe next Monday. I love when Dream Team gets on the call. Oh, it makes me so happy. Okay, all right. I'm gonna, don't go to work next Monday. <laughs> or don't go early. I, I, I can only see your pretty smiley face, so I don't know if you're, if you're hearing me or not. Um, okay, so we have a couple minutes left. Who has something they want to share? Questions, comments, could be about anything. Shout out to somebody on your team. Um, I will just be really super honest. I had a conversation slash message with my, the group I call the head honchos today. Those are my, like my level ones. Um, November is not a great month. So if you are struggling with your volume, I want you to A, know that you are not alone. There's a lot of people struggling right now. But B, I want you to know the month is not over. So um, something they did talk about on the Monday morning motivational call today, we have historically had uh, Black Friday specials of some kind, but we don't know for sure if that will happen. We don't know, you know, we never know totally what they're going to do. So I highly suggest that you have something up your sleeve for Black Friday. I also highly suggest that you don't just post it on Facebook and hope it finds your people. Facebook will be, or it's always super busy, but especially there's going to be Black Friday specials popping up all the time. Um, people are going to be out shopping and maybe not necessarily looking at Facebook. So use Messenger, use text messaging, like actually get a hold of people. And again, it doesn't have to be some big elaborate thing. It can be a lot like what they talked about today. You can just say, hey, I'm having some Black Friday specials. Are you interested? Leave it at that. Because who knows, like if they contact you early, like if they contact me early in the morning, I got stuff. Well, if they contact me at nine o'clock, half of that stuff might be spoken for, right? So just call it a special, are you interested? And if they write back, yeah, great. What's your goals? What's happening right now? How's your, you know, maybe they're currently thriving. How's your Thrive doing? Is there something we can tweak? Or maybe they've not been thriving in a while. Maybe you got a box of free shakes, whatever it is. So you don't have to have like some fancy graphic with, you know, I love graphics, don't get me wrong, but you don't have to have all that. What you have to have is the conversation about the fact that you've got some sort of special. Um, and you never know, like sometimes, I mean, if they pull out like a buy two, get one or is that, yeah, like, I don't know what, I don't know what they'll do for sure. It might be free shipping, something like that. Maybe that'll be good, but maybe they'll need something even more. So I still say just, I've got a Black Friday special. Are you interested? And let it lie at that. And then when they write you back, then you can, you know, start going with all of that. Okay, who has good ideas about skincare sample packs? Uh, Lisa Cook did, marketing to men. Lisa, do you still have that postcard or did you mail them all out? Okay, she's gonna go get that. Um, I don't know, Becca, I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, but Lisa was curious about how to present the little travel size samples to people. Um, I did it. I'm talking about the gift, oh, the actual gift set. Well, this is still a good idea. Like she made the little postcard to send out to people. So when you say you're talking about the gift set, do you mean like how to sell it? Oh, I did Did you just add the one, two, three to the front? I don't remember that last time. The stickers. I like that. Yeah, that's added. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Marketing to men for gifts. Do you set up an account for them? Okay. I would totally set up an account for the husband, boyfriend, the whatever, because I, I feel like a, that's a free customer account. We all want those. And B, it could be secret. You know, it could be a secret that way. Uh, marketing to men. I don't know. I guess I don't market to a lot of men. You can throw it out there on Facebook. It's probably, I don't know. If you try to market to my husband on Facebook, you're going to be screwed because he's hardly ever on there. So it might be the kind of thing, like if you know the person well enough that you feel like you could contact the husband. Um, I don't know. I will tell you, this is something that we deal with at work. 
in our day job. You have to be careful when you're contacting the opposite sex of someone that's married. Just throwing that out there. So make sure whatever conversations do get started, no matter what they respond to you with, you don't laugh at any jokes. Like I'm just being super honest. Um, Cause guys can try to be funny, but if somebody picks up their husband's phone, vice versa. Anyway, that's years of personal training right there. Um, so I don't know exactly how to market to men. Does anybody have ideas? I'm just rambling because I don't know how to, I don't know how to answer this. And then when you say who has good ideas about the skincare sample pack, like the gift set, ideas of how to, who to sell it to, I'm going to unmute you so you can ask, ask your question. No, just promoting it in general, because I thought about doing something for Black Friday with that, because mm -hmm. it really is like a gift. Right. You know, so hey, um, this would be great for your sister and your mom and your blah, blah, blah. Or like, hey, guys, you know, your lady would love this. Right. Like, I don't know. I, I don't have the thought yet. Yeah. I have the pre-thought. Do we know if credits can be used on that? I don't know. And that's what I was just thinking. Because like, you could say for every $150 order, you'll get a free skincare. Get, but again, that would be like you using credits or your own money right. to buy it. So you have to decide if that's something you want to do. Um, <coughs> and again, I think those sets are really cute, but the way Lisa has that skincare stuff done on that little postcard, that's a lot less expensive than the mm -hmm. whole gift set. You could do something like that. You could give that as that could be your skincare gift with $150 purchase or whatever, you know, yes, it's not all the products. Yes. It's not as many days, but it's also not as much money. Mm -hmm. So it just depends we, on what you want to give. You know what I mean? So Lisa, were those the actual like sample packs that you can buy? Yes. So she broke it up and put it on that postcard and had that picture and all that stuff. Yeah, thank you. So you could do something like that. You could even put it in like a Christmas card, you know, tape it to the inside or something. I don't know. Does anybody have any other ideas? Like, I think the gift sets are really beautiful. I love, oh, Sonia, you're up there, Sonia. Oh, wait, it's not letting me, it won't let me unmute you. There you go. Because I muted myself out a little bit. The, she could add a bar herself. You get four of those for what, 35 bucks? So you could do. True. You know, bar soap to that. But True. I, I don't know, the, the little gift set, doesn't it just have like two of each of the four It has products? two of every product. So it's got the three steps, the soap, the mask, and the hand cream, hand cream. Okay. Yeah. But so only it, two, right? Two of each, yeah. So six products, two of each. And I want to say it was 35 bucks, if I'm remembering correctly, something yeah. like that. Um, now, I will tell you as a promoter, this is a great like secret Santa mm -hmm. one of those swap type thing like to have. Yes, it's probably more than the $10 or $15 thing, but they don't have to know how much you paid for it because you're a promoter. Um, so if you want to give something like that to somebody, that's a great opportunity. Um, but again, the $22 hand cream is even less expensive and a great white elephant secret Santa type gift to give also. So um, I don't know. This is a good question. I'm going to send it to the higher ups and ask them what they're doing for the gift sets because they are pretty and they're such a great idea, but I don't know what to do with it either. Lisa. I was just thinking my sister-in-law loves skincare. So I was going to reach out to my brother, which I know that would just be one sale. But if you know, like if you have brothers or brother-in-laws or mm -hmm. your friend's husband, somebody that wouldn't think you were being right. Male coworkers, like people you see on a day to day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. You could just reach out and say, Hey, like I said, I know my sister-in-law loves skincare. So I was going to contact my brother to see if he wanted to get one for her. So that was just a thought. Yeah, no, that's a great thought. I agree. Any, I think any man in your life that you are, I just like, my whole point was like, I have some female customers who I don't know their husbands. I don't even know them very well. So I don't know how I get their husband's number. And I do think it'd be totally awkward, right. <laughs> but yeah, like people that you see all day, like men that you work with on a daily basis, be like, Hey, you need to get this for your wife. She'll love it. It's yeah. only $35. What guy's not going to be like sweet a gift for 35 bucks, right? Way cheaper than diamond earrings <laughs> or whatever, you know? So, but I do think this is worth um, trying to find out what some other teams are doing. So I'm going to throw the question out and see how people are leveraging the gift sets because we've never really had a gift set before. And I think it's really pretty. I just, 
I don't know, I guess I've not thought it through till just now. So there's that. Oh, Olivia says that yes, credits can be used. Thanks, Olivia. Oh. So there you have it. So that's nice. So if you got some credits, so you could throw credits onto an, someone's order or just spin your credits and get those in your hands, you know, to then pass out. So, okay. Well, we've only got three minutes. Nobody has anything they want to share. Everyone's being quiet. Oh, Sandra D, go for it. So I had dinner yesterday with a really good friend of mine and she's been on my list for four and a half years of somebody who I knew needed Thrive. And there have been times that she was a part of my chicken list and um, we were, she was, she just needed to talk and it was really hard. I just kept my mouth shut. Y'all know how hard that is for me. And I just listened and listened and I listened and I listened some more and I would say a few things. And then um, we were probably three fourths of the way through our evening and we were talking about something and I just looked at her and I said, do you trust me? And she said, well, yes, I trust you. And I said, do you trust me enough? to let me help you thrive for at least the first month. Second month will work on th helping you thrive for free. And she said, yes, I'm ready. And I about dropped my <laughs> teeth. Now between her grandchild and my grandchild and trying to get connected tonight, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But, but don't you, give up. You asked the question. And you let her talk first, which I think is super important because again, like we mm -hmm. talked in communication, we are, we know it's for them. Like we already know it. So we're not even paying attention, but Sandra like bit her tongue and let her talk. And the longer you let somebody talk, the more they're going to tell you why they need it. Mm -hmm. And I love that. You, and I love like, cause I imagine like if somebody were to send me, I guess it would depend who it was, but if somebody sent me a text message, do you trust me? I don't know. Like if it was my friend, then obviously yes. But I love that you guys are face to face and you asked her that because obviously it was intimate enough of a moment to just throw that out there. And mm -hmm. I mean, once somebody admits that they trust you, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> I was just, I was, and I want you to know, I mean, I battled with myself for probably 20 minutes. Are you going to say something to her, Sandra? Are you going to say something to her? And I just thought, how horrible a friend would I be if I let her walk away from this table and not offer her that opportunity to experience Thrive for that one, for that first month? And then we're definitely going to work on helping her thrive for free. But I thought, how awful would I be to not give her that chance? And I would be making that chance, that, that decision for her. And I was like, I can't do that. I have to let her make that decision. Okay. That whole last sentence is the whole reason we have this zoom. There you go. That was it in one little sentence. All right. Zoom's going to cut us off. I love you all. Have a fabulous night. If I don't talk to you, have a fabulous Thanksgiving.